Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Mayuresh Naik, and uh, here I am. Today's session is basically about understanding what kind of web development courses we are offering in IT Vedant. The products which we have, which we are giving to our students who are asking or who are looking their career in a web development. Okay, so what kind of options they have and what kind of products we have at our place. Okay, for that reason, we are conducting this session here. So firstly, before understanding, uh, you know, our products, I want all of you to understand how the web application works together. Okay, the reason because since you are telling this to a students also, okay, as a counselor, as a career guide, you also should be aware ki what kind of applications, you know, these people are going to develop. Suppose we are giving somebody a web developer profile or this kind of courses to him. So what kind of technologies that person is going to learn, you know, so that you need to also understand where it stands. The reason because we all, you, me, everyone, we all are using web development applications in our day to day life, like your Facebook, Gmail. These are all web applications, even our pulse of our IT Vedant, you know, on which you put your daily commitments, daily updates. It's also a web application. But how this web application firstly works, we need to understand that. And then I'll explain you about the products. So first of all, any web application, whatever the website you visit. Okay. So if it is a pulse.itvedan.com or gmail.com or your facebook.com in every web application, there is a client and a server. When we talk about a client, a client is a machine from where we access these websites. So either you access it using your laptop or your desktops or you, 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 uh, you know, access it using your mobile device also. So all these devices comes under the category of client. But the thing is, ki on all these devices, there is one common software which we all use, you and me, that is called browser. Okay, so browser is our client system, you know, the client basically, via which we access these websites. And there, they, that, there comes your server where we keep these files, you know, so everybody can access. So even if I'm at home or my office, I can access these web applications. Because all these web applications are located at some server, you know, and using my machine, using my browser, I'm accessing them from my client system. So there is a client and a server. So on the server, as I said, these files are everything are located. Server ka kaam, what is the use of server over here is? So server process all this request made by the client. For example, if I am asking for a website called www.itvedan.com, so server ka kaam hai ki to this request they will process and that response will be given okay or the same request so when you utilizing one system when you ask ki, i want to visit www.facebook.com if the request goes to the server server responds by giving you a page login page or a home page or whatever and you get your response so that's how the request response happens now when this happens there are certain technologies get involved in this Okay, and this response response thing. So what is this technologies which is involved in this? So at a client side in which you see your output, there are three technologies which majorly being used because in your browser, whatever the data is coming from the server is being to be displayed, you know, so that we can see the output. We can see the web Facebook pages. We can see our Gmail accounts or we can see our emails. Or even in Pulse also, you can go and add your commitments or everything. But before that, you should see something over there, the data or the content, I would say. That data, if you want to showcase, we need the technologies like HTML to, you know, handle the structuring of it, CSS to beautifying it by providing some styling to it, and JavaScript, which makes it more interactive, you know, uh, this website. So HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, these three technologies are actually client-side technologies. That means they work on a browser. So these are called browser side technologies. And in the world, there is no other competition to all this three technologies. Okay. So if I use any programming language at server end, but my client side technologies are going to remain same. That is HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now let's talk about the server side technologies. So at the server side, I have a lot of options to use a technology. You know, I can go for PHP. 
Python, uh, .NET technologies, Java, Node.js, this kind of all there are options are available to me. Okay, so in web application, there are two parts automatically become one is called front end front end means the client side application browser side applications and the other is a called back end means server side thing. So HTML, CSS, JavaScript goes to the client side that is front end while your languages like PHP, Python, they all goes to the back end that is a server. So firstly, we'll understand what is this front end technologies or what kind of products we have for a front end. Okay. So in a front end, we have uh, two types of courses available. One is a web design course and other is a angular 10 course. So these two courses we have web design and angular 10. Now, when we talk about a web designing course in web designing, we are teaching students HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, jQuery and a bootstrap. These five things we are teaching under a web design course understood. And after a web design, a student can do a angular 10 also because for angular 10, the require the knowledge of JavaScript is must. That is the reason we cannot add him directly to a web design batch. We first sorry uh, to a directly to a angular 10 batch. We need to assign a web design batch at first and then we can assign a angular 10. But we have these two products. One is as I said, web design course and one is angular 10. Inside web design, we have this HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, jQuery and a bootstrap. Now, if you have a doubt regarding this technologies, okay, so I would like to explain you something. See, when we talk about HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, remember this diagram It's simple to understand, you know, so HTML is like a skeleton. Okay, it provides structure to our web pages, how the web pages should display, where it should display. So the skeleton of uh, your data is defined by the HTML. Now, JavaScript will put a muscles on it because if we do not have a muscles in our body, I cannot move my hand from, you know, uh, I cannot move my hand from uh, top to down or bottom like that, or I cannot wave it. So I need a muscles to make some actions, right? So that is what JavaScript provides and CSS provide us all the styling that uh, the, the color of the skin is fair or it's a blackish one or you know what is the height what is the uh, our uh, waist size and everything so all these details you know styling that is provided by the css okay if i have to uh, tell you this in terms of uh, the most you know preferred website which we prefer that is facebook let's say so all you and me both have the similar kind of facebook profiles right the pages but the data is different, right? But if you look at the layout, the layout is very much same because the HTML, which decides where the cover image will go, where the profile picture will go, how the post will display, how my photos will be displayed, you know, where my information will be displayed. So all the uh, structuring of that data, the content is defined by HTML, but the styling that profile picture should be, you know, displayed in the center or it should display in a round basis or the color of that uh, add to story link will be should be blue or the post which is active it should be blue you know the text color should be uh, white the background color should be black and everything so all this styling part is handled by css now suppose if i click on my profile picture what will happen i'll get a pop-up and in that pop-up i can see the whole uh, profile picture of mine so this pop-up thing you know that making interactivity for your html and css is provided by the javascript so interactiveness of uh, all your website, suppose you, you see multiple websites where the banners are moving, changing. So all this because of JavaScript. So all these three technologies are used in web design course. jQuery is a framework of JavaScript means if I am writing my JavaScript, if I have to write more effectively, you know, uh, so I can use a framework called jQuery for that. So jQuery framework is being used in companies morely and that is the reason we have included that in the course. Also, there is one more framework which we are learning is called Bootstrap. It's a CSS and JavaScript combined framework. So this framework help us to create responsive websites. Responsive means the website which will display in all the type of devices. Okay, simultaneously properly. So this Bootstrap is also have a lot of demand in companies. And that is the reason all these five technologies, HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, along with a framework such as jQuery and a Bootstrap. This all are we are covering inside a web design course. And we are also offering Angular 10. Okay, this is again a framework of JavaScript, which is used at the front end side. In many companies, there is a requirement for Angular developer. And that is the reason we have this separate piece of course. 
because as a student if i learn this i get a lot of depth in my front end technologies so these are all we are covering in the front end move on to the back end in back end now as a you know a student or i would say uh, as a developer if you want to become a web developer you have options you can go for python development or you can go for php development or you can go for a java development or you can go for a main stack developer now this is a choice which you make ki should i uh, go for you know python course or should i go become a php developer or should i go and become a java developer so this is what basically you know the the deci- decision which we make generally now suppose if a person is choosing a python development then in the python course he learns about python as a language plus the framework of python that is called django framework so to develop the application using python i should use its framework because companies use this framework than the no- normal language so, but to learn understand the framework the main language need to be learned so python plus django this is what we generally learn under the python development as a php developer we learn about core php advanced php laravel this kind of the laravel is what it's a framework of php so these three technologies we generally understand or learn inside php development course if you are going for a java development then we have core java advanced java spring and hibernate again the same way the spring and hibernate is a framework of your java so see if you look at all these languages you know what we have common over here you are learning the language and you are learning the framework because the companies use this the framework so if you are learning python you are learning django you are learning core php advanced php you are learning laravel which is a framework of php you are learning core java advanced java then you are learning a framework called spring and hibernate which is a framework of java in min stack you learn about node js mongodb and express js so this three technologies okay along with angular because min is basically if you look at the full form of min is mongodb express js angular js and node js there is one more thing actually comes over here is called react js which is very much similar to angular so while giving it to the student we can also offer the react as well okay so all this back end technologies there is a language and a framework along with two more courses which we offer here one is a dbms course now see in all this uh, programming languages at a server the data gets stored also so that means the data gets stored in a databases so we require a database language over here and the language which we uh, you know teach for the dbms is called mysql but let me tell you this dbms course is go along with python php and java not with mean stack why because in mean this mongodb which you see the second module after node js the mongodb this is a database over there in mean and that is the reason we are not included dbms under mean stack but dbms goes under python development php development as well as under java development also we are teaching rest api topic this is a common for all four so rest api if you are learning restful api as how it works so python developer also learn it php also learn it java also learn it and your mean stack developer also learn the rest api so this more two technologies are at a back end end now when we talk about rest api rest api is nothing but writing the web services using which i can use the same data on the different type of devices so suppose if you have a website of amazon but also we have a app of amazon and both the data are sync to one hai na so if you add a products into suppose your website of amazon to your account you can see the same products on your app also well because the database is a common but how it is been managed between the two different you know platforms that is being a web server and the mobile app is because of rest api and that is the reason we are teaching this topic to our students okay because understanding this in the web technologies is also important so summarizing the back end again we have different types of courses to offer python development php developer java developer and a mean developer so python django is under a java, uh, python core php advanced php laravel is under a php core java advanced java spring hybrid is under a java and node mongo and express is under your mean stack along with the angular the angular which you are learning in the front end so dbms and the rest api is also we are offering but dbms goes with python php and java not with mean because mean has a mongo 
okay and the rest api is going with everyone so you have now this front end and the back end now while selling the courses to the students we sell python developer okay pg in python developer post graduation in python developer so in that course basically we sell the front end technologies such as web design and angular and back end technologies python django dbms rest api so as a python developer pg courses you know has all this different set of modules here let talk about php development then in php development we have a front end again with the web design and angular and the back end along with core php advanced php laravel along with the dbms and rest api java developer you are learning web design and angular over here also as a front end and as a back end you are learning core java advanced java spring hibernate dbms and rest api in mean stack developer you are learning web design and angular in the front end and in the back end you are learning about node js express js mongodb and rest api so these are the modules you know which are present in all this different different types of pg courses of ours okay so in the web development see guys we we are you, you know using dotnet also but dotnet currently we are not that much continuing if it is required i'll give it in the other video to you now apart from this we have a master in web development for that i'll create a, another video because all this pg courses we have you know taken some of the modules from it and we have created a master which is a 12 months course over there all this pg courses which i have explained you now you know all are of 6 months of duration basically okay but the master has a 12 months of duration and what is there in the master so it's a combination of all this different different set of modules i'll create another video for that thank you so much for your time and i hope this video has helped you thank you guys all the best